One of the brightest spots of the season for the Montreal Canadiens wasn't a player, but it was the GM Kent Hughes, a man who is currently going above and beyond his pay grade, scouting prospects in person in Switzerland, has made a trade within the past year that is, looks like it's going to pay dividends for the Habs long term, and it's getting better day by day. We'll be talking about some of the comments he made in Switzerland and that trade on this edition of Habs Digest. Hello, bonjour, ahoy, and welcome to today's news edition of Habs Digest. I'm your host, Josh Goss. And a quick reminder, guys, we're almost at 4,800 subs. We're just over 200 subs away from 5,000. So if you haven't hit that button, get us to 5,000. Can't be that hard, right? I'm sure a lot of you haven't hit that button. So if you haven't, do it now. I'm not going to bother you anymore as we're just going to get right into the video. And the first thing I want to talk about. We're going to talk a bit about Kent Hughes, his time in Switzerland right now, and some comments he actually made today, but I want to talk first about the Sean Monaghan trade, and I know everyone's talked about the Sean Monaghan uh, trade since the day it happened. Of course, the Habs got Sean Monaghan and a first-round pick for nothing, basically cap relief from the Calgary Flames. But as Marco D'Amico pointed out in an article just posted today on Montreal Hockey Now, I recommend you guys to go read it. If you haven't already, head over to Marco D'Amico's Twitter. He posts articles every day. Awesome author. But he mentions how... Day by day, this looks like a better and better trade, and I'll get into why. So first things first, we got to talk about how Calgary missed the playoffs this year. After trying to have a big offseason, trying to replace the likes of Johnny Gaudreau and Matthew Kachuk, who went off to Columbus and Florida respectively in the offseason, they needed to fill those holes. And the only way they could do that was dumping Sean Monaghan's contract to Montreal along with a first-round pick so they could make room to sign Nazem Kadri, sign Jonathan Huberto to an extension along with Mackenzie Weger. But despite all that, they missed the playoffs by finishing two points behind the Winnipeg Jets in the wild card race. Now, missing the playoffs in this first year of all these guys, well, why does that matter? Well, let's take a look. As Marco D'Amico smartly points out in his article, most notably the likes of Michael Backlund and Elias Lindholm, two of the club's most important players, casting down on their future with the club after their contract expires next season. Lindholm is a top-line center, and he'll get a raise from $4.875 million. Backlund will be 35 by the end of that next year, and he might also look elsewhere to get a true shot at winning a Stanley Cup. And replacing talent like that is not easy. Yes, Backlund is aging, but he's still proven to be a very important veteran presence on the Calgary Flames, still putting up points, and especially Lindholm himself. He's going to demand probably $8 million a year, so this guy's amazing. He's a 40-goal scorer, like, fantastic guy that everyone's going to want on their team. And let's just look at the cap-friendly thing here. And the reason I'm showing you this, well, wh why does it matter? Oh, we're saying Calgary's going to be bad? One thing you guys got to know, Kent Hughes got the first-round pick for 2025 in that trade. Now, whether that was Calgary's doing or Montreal, we're not sure, but I like to think that Kent Hughes maybe has for 2025s for a specific reason. Uh, we don't know exactly if that's true, but let's roll with it. Let's just look at the 2024-25 column here on cap-friendly. And if you guys haven't used Cap Friendly, it's the best spot to go look at teams, salary situations, contracts, things like that. Michael Backlund is expiring. He's probably going to go somewhere else. That's talent you need to replace. Elias Lindholm. If he doesn't go somewhere else, he's going to want a big, big payday. He's going to be in his prime with the Calgary Flames. He's going to demand a lot of money. Tyler Toffoli is also expiring. Will he go somewhere else? He was one of their top point producers this season at 73 points. Dylan Dubé is an RFA. He's going to demand some good money. A team might, Other teams might be offering some money too. Noah Hannafin is going to need a bit of a pay raise as well. One of their top defensemen. And then you also got Chris Tanev, Nikita Zadorov, and uh, also... If you look at the top column there, Adam Ruzicka, another big Slovak, very similar build to Juraj Slavkovsky, a 6'4 Slovakian player who showed out with 20 points in 44 games for the Flames this year, so this is not going to be easy for them. And the Habs have their pick that season right when these guys expire. They expire before 24-25, so the Flames are going to either have to scramble to replace these guys, go into a full rebuild, or I don't know what they're going to have to do. Maybe they'll try to compete by trying to replace the talent. Who knows if that's going to be successful. And when you have $17.5 million tied up in Nazem Kadri and Jonathan Huberdeau, who only had 55 points in 79 games this year, less than half his point production from last season. His point production last season was almost 1.5. This season, it's 0.69 points per game. Yes, it's a down year for Huberto, but it's not a good sign. Even if we compare him to the one of the guys they had to trade to sign him to the extension, Sean Monaghan. Yes, only 25 games. It's a completely unfair comparison. I'm just going to come out and say that. Of course, it's not fair. This guy was injured basically the whole year. But in the time he did play, he had a 0.68 point per game average. Basically identical to Jonathan Huberto. So when healthy... He was producing as many points, and he's a veteran leader. I know Huberto brings more than just his points to the Calgary Flames. He's an amazing locker room presence by all accounts, but still, it's very interesting. 
right? So when you have 17 and a half mil tied up in Huberto and Kadri, and you still need to sign or replace that list of like five, six, seven guys that are going to be expiring right in that season before Montreal has their pick, it's going to be very difficult. That first round pick in 2025, we thought getting Sean Monaghan for nothing was a steal, and he might even sign with Montreal next year. Can you imagine that? He signs, say, a two-year deal for $3 million total dollars just to be on a team, and when he plays, he can be a veteran presence, whatever, and the Habs get that first round pick that's looking like it could very well be pretty low from the Calgary Flames. It, it's pretty amazing. I mean, it's a little detail of this trade that I noticed in the article from D'Amico today that I didn't notice at the time. We just thought, oh, a first-round pick in Monaghan. But that specific year, 2025, looks like it could pay huge, huge dividends for Montreal when it comes. So, very, very interesting. Um, and let me know what you guys think of that as well, because let me know if you guys noticed that or not, or if you knew that that was going to potentially be a make-or-break year for the Calgary Flames. There's a lot of decision-making to have now with their new general manager, whatever. I don't think they've announced it yet. I'm not really sure, but Brad, Brad Treleving, I believe, is out. Uh, maybe I'm mistaken on that, but uh, yeah. So it's going to be very interesting for Calgary in the next couple of years. But this trade from Kent Hughes looks like a brilliant one. And Hughes isn't stopping there with the good moves. Kent Hughes is, is over in Switzerland right now, and he is scouting on his own. Now, a lot of people are saying, oh, so what? A GM is going to do their job. Well, that's not a GM's job. Usually the scouting team handles the scouting, but Kent Hughes spoke out today about multiple things, including Lane Hudson. I took this from Reddit. I forget the user on Reddit who gave a little transcript, but at uh, one of the period intermissions of one of the games, I think it was Slovakia versus someone uh, over at the Under-18 World, Kent Hughes gave an interview, and here's what he had to say. He talked a bit uh, for a while about the team management and how they trust their scouts, but it's also important to see games live to get a better feel for players, and he's saying he himself wants to see the players live. He can trust his scouting team, but when, when the management gets to see the players, that can be that extra little step to understand why or why not scouts are high or low on certain players. He confirmed there's a lot of talent in the upcoming draft. Duh. And he also talked about Lane Hudson, and he used the words excellent, dynamic, and unpredictable when talking about Lane and I wanted to mention those few things. Excellent, obviously. Dynamic, sure. Unpredictable is a very interesting word to describe Lane Hudson, and I kind of love it. When you have a guy like Lane Hudson, who has such a, an interesting skill set combined with his size, he's just like a, a an amazing offensive player. He can catch fire like that. He can drive a team's offense. You never And you never really know what he's going to do, right? His skating ability, his puck handling in the offensive zone, his playmaking... He's the kind of guy that you really have to commit to on defense because you don't know what he's going to do next. And that unpredictability of a player can really help them a lot, especially at the NHL level when guys are used to like certain certain players doing certain moves all the time. A guy who's a bit unpredictable can really fool defenses at least for a while until they figure him out, but it's a good trait to have. So thought that was really interesting that he was speaking on Hudson. But the main interesting point, as I mentioned, is that Hughes himself is taking the time to go over to Switzerland and scout these prospects himself. I'm sure he's with the scouting team looking at these 18-year-old guys. Probably not one of their first-round picks that he's looking at, but he's probably looking at further depth in the draft. And mind you, Team Slovakia was playing in this game, so Kent Hughes might have an affinity for Slovakian talent after drafting Juraj Slavkovsky first overall last year. Maybe get him a buddy, someone he knows uh, in a later pick of the draft. Of course, they already got Philip Mayshar too, who is Slovakian, so... It's very, very interesting. I love what Kent Hughes is doing, uh, but I just wanted to take a moment today after reading that article to show you, like, that Monaghan trade is insane. Kent Hughes is really going above and beyond, and, uh, yeah, I don't think I could possibly have more faith in our management. But that'll do it for this news edition of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Help us at 5,000. We are so close. So if you guys could hit that button, if you haven't yet, we'd really appreciate it. I've been your host, Josh Goss. We'll catch you in the next one.